Welcome to the latest edition of the Gramophone Podcast. I'm Martin Cullingford, editor of Gramophone, and I'm delighted to be joined today by the American countertenor Reginald Mobley to talk about his beautiful new album on the Alpha label, Because. Reginald Mobley, hello. Hey, nice to see you, Martin. Now, the album is of spirituals, as reimagined through a variety of styles which emerged from that tradition, not least jazz. But let's begin at the very beginning. What, what defines a spiritual? So spirituals is basically the collection of of songs that come out of the tradition. Well, not even tradition. Well, it's a very bad tradition, uh, but out of out of slavery, Ameri- in in the American South or in in America in general. Um, in that time, music became kind of the backbone of of processing a lot of guilt and sorrow and pain um, that that came about because of the horror of slavery. Uh, and not just that, but of course there were songs of sorrow, songs of joy, there were work songs. These are all things that happened on fields and in plantations in, in, in America during that time. But also um, things that we call coded spirituals. Um, all the, the songs that were used to communicate not just feeling and emotion but also the fact that there is a chance that the Underground Railroad or that there's going to be an escape attempt to happen. There was everything society that was being, that the black experience where it was being created and, and being built was born and, and, and fostered and incubated through music. A lot of traditions that come from, come from Africa and some that were just natively born out of the grief um, that happened in the America, in American South during that time. So once once slavery was finally abolished in 19th century, there was a decision to either keep all this music that was born out of out of pain and but there was also an idea that maybe we should get rid of that as well to forget all of the pain and horror that happened, but but there was something unusual about the about these melodies about the about the the depth of, of these of this music that was created. And so we decided to keep it. Not only keep it, but it became the backbone of of the black American contribution to culture in America. And it became the foundation and backbone of honestly most pop music you hear now, even to the point that it even in, influenced and filtered into classical music as well. But the but the root of all of that is this collection of all the songs that we've known through tradition that have that have come up and been created, and have been kind of cataloged and categorized as as the Black American spiritual, African American spiritual. But it is it is a very native. I don't even want to say folk song or folk music, but it truly is just something unique that was born of that time. And extraordinarily moving songs, and actually, it's it's almost the ones which are full of of hope and joy, which are the most moving of all because of the experiences of which they would have been uh, written and created. Absolutely, yeah. we love we love pearls, and but <laughs> and pearls are created from an, from an, from an irritation. Um, our irritation, of course, was a lot greater than than a than a grain of sand. But I think what what has been created and what has evolved out of what what happened it has been i mean it has it's changed society in so many ways and we and we we hardly ever spend a lot of time thinking about how much has 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 changed in not just america but around the world because of because of what was what, what we created um during our time of strife for 400 years uh plus say the the melodies and the, the style went on to in, inform so much of of 20th century music you know, blues jazz gospel so many others and on this specific album the the big sort of um lens through which you're looking at it is 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 jazz so tell me about how you put this specific program together and about the arrangements so it, it's it's actually kind of interesting the uh 
So we decided to create to to record an album after um, after a recital that I performed in Paris at Musée d'Orsay uh, in twenty seventeen, I believe, and the idea was to record this this recital that I performed, which was the music of black composers of the past three hundred three and a half centuries, uh, which included not not just American spirituals and American black composers, but also non-American composers of black descent. So that includes Ignacia Sancho, uh, the first, you know, first uh, British person, black British person to vote in parliamentary elections, including um, Charlie de saint George, who there's, I mean, there's a movie right now, a, a Disney film, I believe, that's, that I hope um, is making some waves. Uh, Esteban Salas, who is a, an Afro-Cuban composer, the only really known Baroque composer of Cuba and Nunez Garcia, who was also a Brazilian composer in the 18th, 19th, 19th century. But all those plans were laid to waste because this weird thing happened in 2020 that kind of shut down the entire world. And so everything was put on pause during COVID. And at that time, uh, Didier Martin, the head of Alpha Classics, and I had been conversing back and forth, and he decided that we should still go f forward with the album, but instead of using um, a classical pianist, he was curious if I would be able to work with a jazz pianist that he worked with often on his label, uh, Baptiste Rognon. Uh, Baptiste, of course, is not a classical pianist, he's a jazz pianist, an incredible jazz musician uh, and, and, and composer, and I realized that that might make things a little difficult uh, to see how well he would be able to, would want to play through William Grant still uh, and arrangements of, you know, Chauvet de Saint-Georges. So we went back and forth throughout the the first year of the pandemic. And eventually he kept, he kept saying how much, of, you know, that he was a jazz musician and that that was kind of his, where he came from. And I realized that, well, what, where you come from is actually comes from where I come from. Um, jazz is an evolution of, of the basis of a lot of this music that I know. And so what I did was I, we, I put together a folder of the music of all of these spirituals, um, spirituals, slave songs, as well as non idiomatic uh, compositions of composers like Florence Price and Harry Burley, and, and just sent this huge file of PDFs to Baptiste and said, Pick what you like. Which which melodies work for you? And he sent back, okay, this this is what I like. This is what I like. This is what I like. And between the two of us, we re we realized that what we should do is take the melodies of all of these songs, or take these 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 spiritual tunes, and then kind of re harmonize them and retranslate re them through his own understanding of music as a jazz musician. So basically, he is a jazz musician, kind of going back to the roots of what what became his style through his style and basically kick, uh, kicking the tires on these melodies to see their resilience. But also what we did was we basically treated them like jazz standards, which I don't think is often are really done. We have no problem taking the music of Gershwin and Porter and Irving Berlin and, and letting Ella Fitzgerald and you know, Duke Ellington, you know, kick them around with their style. But why don't we, why haven't we done that with our own music? And I think in America, there is, of course, there is a lot of, of emotional baggage and even also social and political baggage that is surrounding uh, spirituals and slave songs that we still haven't had a proper conversation. And, and so I don't think we've really considered just looking at how beautiful this music is. Like, yes, there's so much weight and there's so much attached to it, but there's also beauty and resilience. There's also strength and and survival and freedom in this music. And so we wanted to try and celebrate that by kind of giving it a giving it a new giving it a new suit. Uh, and that being through Baptiste style, his his jazz style. And it's yeah. been a, quite a quite an adventure since then. I got a room, you got a room, oh my god, you got a room. When I get to heaven, I'm gonna put in my room. I'm gonna shout out low because heaven, heaven, heaven. Everybody talking about heaven ain't a good one. Heaven, heaven. I'm gonna shout out low because heaven.
obviously a countertenor, and we don't always hear these pieces performed in the countertenor voice. So tell me about that. Does the awareness of the discovery, the unexpectedness perhaps, play a role in the way that you interpret these pieces? Ah, uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Okay, yes. And so most people, when they do hear or think of the spiritual, they think of it being performed by a large black bass baritone, or like Paul Robeson. But as a countertenor, I became a countertenor long after I became a black person. I grew up with this music. This music is something that has been a part of me for as long as I, I have memory. So it was natural for me to continue singing this music when I became a countertenor. So that never really stopped. And it was actually, as I, as I continue to learn and become a better uh, classical singer or Baroque singer performer and, and experimenting with different colors and affects that I realized that these things can also lend a lot more, a lot more, um, a, a wider spectrum to how we hear and to how we perform spirituals. And to the, uh, to this day, there's so, there are so many black American counterners now, and I can't think of a single one that doesn't often perform spirituals or gospel. Um, there aren't many of us, of course, traveling internationally and doing this, but the, but the thing is, is that I'm, I'm actually, I'm not that unique in that, in that, in that matter. There are many of us here doing it. It's just, we, for some reason, there seems to be a filter that we really only want to hear outside of, you know, outside of churches, we want to hear us either, you know, singing Handel or singing Jonathan Dove or singing Bach. But we never, we never really think too much about how much, you know, hearing us do what we grew up doing, what we think we still do best. And when you hear it, when you hear it done, it is absolutely powerful. Um, because the thing about becoming a countertenor is I spent a lot of time in college at trying to be a baritone and trying to be a tenor. And it was absolutely lousy. I was terrible. <laughs> but when I, when I became a countertenor, when I finally, when I was figured out that this is what I should be doing, it really kind of snapped everything in the focus. It allowed me to actually express myself in the way I, I felt on the inside, the way I thought that, that I should be able to express my art. And so because I have that freedom, I can truly sing spirituals just as, as well as I sing, sing Baroque music with, what I, with, with, with my true feeling, with what I think should be done, with what I think is appropriate for the music. And so much of the beautiful countertenor repertoire that you sing from, from the Brock era, the, the characters that you portray then, explore such a range of, 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 of emotions, of, of pain and joy, the very things that we're hearing in these, these spirituals. You, are you conscious of, sort of, of, a, of any kind of relationship between the work you say do with John Elliott Gardner and the, the Monteverdi singers and, and then the music that you're singing on this album? 100%. 100%. I, there, of course, there's not, there's not a direct parallel, but I think that when when jazz and blues evolved out of spirituals there there kind of emerged this similar this similar spirit to what i to what i think and what people like john elliott think existed in in the baroque period the fact that there was such an adherence to to the text to to colors and affects and modes um to to human nature and not just that, but the fact that the spots on the page was it was just a chart. It was just something that kind of it was a blueprint to creating something that was that was alive. And I mean, and that of course happened because also these composers were also very much a part of the ensembles and and groups that they that they were leading or that they were they were working with. Um, so there was they understood that that spark of of life, of energy, of even of improvisation, sh is what made music music, and you hear that in in jazz, you hear that in gospel, you hear that in blues, you hear this almost desperate need to 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 exist through through this music. I mean, there there are those parallels where people talk about, 
you know, that a jazz combo is basically a modern continuo band. Um, and, and, I, and, I, and I love that. And, and that does help people kind of bring down their defenses and kind of accept or, or come to maybe consider the fact that there, there, there could be uh, some sort of relationship spiritually. But I, I absolutely think that there is, between jazz, between gospel, between Baroque music, there is something there that that we all share and of course the thing that we never really look at is that you know we're all we're all humans uh we're all people that's the greatest relationship that we that all these things share that is, that is us that we that that we all find a way to express the one thing that we have always shared and always will our emotions our feelings like bach loved just as duke ellington loved and monteverdi and Anna fitzgerald they all felt emotions and passions and styles may change, notes may change, the color of the skin of the people who are performing may change, but that raw practical magic, that raw thing, that raw feeling, that raw thing that exists in all people is, is always there. And so however you want to access it through how many channels, as long as we get to the root of it, I think the music will always be honest, there will always be integrity, it will always be, it'll always be true to itself. Yeah. Something else I just wanted to ask you about was a name you mentioned earlier, Harry Thacker Burley, a singer who set the spirituals to piano accompaniment in the idiom of his own time in the early 20th century, in a way perhaps doing what you're doing now back then. Tell me a little bit about him. So Harry, Harry <laughs> Burley, Harry Thacker Burley, Harry T. Burley, um, who many consider to be kind of the dean of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the spiritual, especially the concert spiritual. He was a student at the um, at the American Conservatory in in New York, and was working. He was basically working his way through school by by you know doing custodial work, and at that time, there happened to be a guest lecturer there, uh, Antonin Dvorak, and Dvorak one day heard Burley singing, just you know humming and singing spiritual tunes that he grew up with. Uh, from you know, from you know, obviously because of being a descendant of slaves, and was just shocked by what he heard and stopped him and had him, you know, had him stop what he was doing and and had him sing fully what he what what he was what he was kind of mumbling and humming, and then he said, "We'll sing you more and sing you more and sing you more." And basically, they they said uh, that the sun basically set on hair, you know, on Burley and Dvorak. Um, together, listen, you know, Dvorak listening to him sing every single spiritual he knew until he was, until he was, a, you know, hoarse. And Dvorak was, was com completely inspired by this. You know, he basically said that here is, this is American music. Like, this is the soul of American music here. And it inspired him to, of course, uh, write the theme for his New World Symphony, his Ninth Symphony. And... And of course, it also inspired other composers like Delius, um, who spent time in Florida, my native uh, state. I'm from uh, originally a Floridian, who studied African American um, songs and well as the songs and music of Native Americans from tribes that existed in Florida. And it, it's and Burley basically because of that became this kind of figure who was the the source of of bringing the spiritual to to the American consciousness. So he arranged all of these spirituals, um, choral arrangements and solo arrangements, but basically putting them into music form that can be shared and uh, shared widely. And he, of course, was also a singer, baritone himself, but he was mostly known as a composer and arranger of these spirituals. And he also, of course, um, wrote his own non-idiomatic songs, or basically art songs, one of which we perform on, on this album, Gene. Uh, and it was and it was it was on purpose that that we sourced something of his that wasn't you know a spiritual that he that he that he preserved because it's also important to recognize that 
that black Americans, black people are not just pain and reflections of pain. We also are reflections of beauty and joy and and just music and art and beauty for its own sake. And and you hear that in in Jean and the music of Burley and also with the music of Florence Price that's in this album are also non idiomatic songs, art songs that are that are also translated through through Baptiste style. Hmm. Well it's a very beautiful album and I urge listeners to to listen to it and just a reminder that because by my guest today Reginald Mobley and pianist Baptiste Trottignon is available now on the Alpha label. Reginald Mobley thank you so much for joining me today. Oh it's an absolute pleasure Martin it really really it's 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 a nice way to start the day. Jean, my Jean, with the eyes of light and the beautiful soft brown hair do you know that I'm longing for you tonight? For your lips, for the clasp of your hands. Jean by Harry Thacker Burley, and sung by my guest today, Reginald Mobley, with Baptiste Trottignon on piano, and taken from his new album, Because, on Alpha Classics. If you've enjoyed this gramophone podcast, we'd be hugely grateful if you could leave a rating or a review, hit the subscribe button, or simply tell your friends about our work. And if you want to explore classical music in even greater depth with gramophone, then we produce a monthly magazine packed full of interviews, features, and reviews. And all listeners to this podcast can get a 20% discount by visiting gramophone.co.uk forward slash subscribe and entering podcast20 at the checkout. Thank you for listening and do join us again for another Gramophone podcast next week.